Hello, in today's video I'm going to be talking about compound inequalities. We'll be doing some graphing. A compound inequality consists of two distinct inequalities joined by the word and or the word or. So for instance, let's say you got an inequality that was x is less than or equal to 3 and x is greater than 1. So I'm going to draw three number lines here. One, two, three. And let's just make three of them. Okay, here we go. So there's one, two, and three. And let's say this first one we'll do in red. It's x is less than or equal to three. Oops, that's not red. Here we go. X is less than or equal to 3, and we shade all the way to the left. And let's say this uh, right one here. I'm going to do it in green this time. And that's going to be an open circle at 1 and shading to the right. Well, when we graph a compound inequality, it's the intersection of both of these uh, statements. So X has to be less than 3, and so that makes it uh, less than or equal to 3, excuse me. So that makes... Uh, this boundary going left, right, uh, going left correct, and then the greater than one makes this boundary going to the right, and so the intersection of those two is this part in the middle, which is shaded, and also this closed circle, not the open circle. Um, another way to write an AND statement is to join them so I could write it like this um, x is greater than 1 and less than or equal to 3 notice so everything um, you know 1.1 works and 2 works and 2.9 works all within this one inequality and so this here would be the answer to the compound inequality and statement uh, above it's made up of these two parts, right? Uh, okay, let's uh, take a look at what an OR statement might look like. So let's say I had x is less than 1 or x is greater than 2. Again, I'm going to make a few number lines here. 1, 2, Three. All right, let's call on this a couple times. All right, so we have our three number lines, and we're going to show how these inequalities combine. Combine. So we have x is greater than one, which looks. Oops. Let's make that red. Which uh, that's an open circle, and we are shading to the right. Oops, I messed that up. It's. Uh, less than one okay here we go so shading to the left and then in green I'll do this one and then we have a greater than two and so that would shade to the right now an or statement is not the combination of the two or the intersection of the two um, it's just both of them together also called the union of the two so in this third graph I'm going to show you that the graph of X is less than one or greater than 2 is these outside things. Notice in this graph it is not possible for a number to be true in both cases, right? A, a 3 for instance is true for the second case but it can't be true for the first case. Um, so whereas the AND statement uh, the, every number in here is true for both cases in the OR statement it can only be true for either one of the cases. Um, there is a different way that an OR statement can overlap. So for instance, let's say um, this said x is greater than 1 or x is less than 2. In this case we are, oops, there's supposed to be a 1 there, x is greater than 1 or x is less than 2. So in this case, there is going to be some overlap, but that's not what the OR statement is telling us to graph. So we have a 1, we have a 2, and we have a 3. 
And so x is greater than 1 would be an open circle shading to the right. And x is less than 2 would be an open circle of 2 shading left. Okay, notice when you do the shading from the 1 to the right, it would fill in that closed circle. And when you do the shading from the 2 to the left, it fills in this close, the open circle at 1. So um, what you end up with, with this OR statement, is all numbers are correct because... Um, you know, half of them are less than two, and the other half are greater than one, and so everything works, right? So all numbers work in this case. All right, let's go on to some examples. So let's say we are going to graph, solve and graph. Let's say we wanted to graph all numbers in between, so all numbers in between uh, 2 and 5. So we can make a combined inequality statement. Now this would be numbers in between 2 and 5 would include 3 and 4 and 4.5 and so on. Uh, but they do not include 2 and they do not include 5. So if we were to graph that, whoops, that's not exactly a straight line but you get the idea so if we were to graph this it would look like greater than 2 and less than 5 all numbers in between 2 and 5 uh, and if we were to write a statement for that we could write it in two ways we could say um, x is greater than 2 and x is less than 5 we could also do it in a combined way and we could say it like this all right let's say we were going to solve an equation or an inequality, so we have 5 is less than or equal to y plus 2 is less than or equal to 11. So in this case, we, we've solved these before. Um, you want to subtract 2. Now instead of from each side, we have three parts. We have this part on the left, we have the part in the middle, and the part on the right. So 2 has to be subtracted from all of them. And so we end up with 3 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 11. So here's our combined inequality. Uh, this is an and statement because the numbers can be both greater than 3 and also less than 11. And only and statements can be combined in one single inequality here. So if we wanted to graph that, I won't put every number, I'll just put 3 and 11 on here. Um, we know that y is greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 11 and the shading in between. So this is an AND statement. There's another way um, to say this, or another way to show this, it's called interval notation. Interval, interval notation has uh, three things happening with it. Uh, for this one, we would write um, bracket 3, comma, 11, bracket. And so this interval notation tells us that um, the bracket says greater than or, or greater than or equal to. The 3 is the, is the bottom number. The 11 is the top number, and the bracket says greater than or, or sorry, less than or equal to. Um, if instead I was graphing uh, something like 3 is less than y, which is less than or equal to 11, notice how it changes. The, the left bracket would become a parenthesis to show that it cannot be equal. Okay, so this symbol would be parentheses and then this symbol would be bracket and this is just another way of writing either this inequality compound inequality or show this graph okay um, one or two more things so if I was gonna graph um, X is greater than or equal to 3, just that statement, um, it would look like 
this, obviously, greater than or equal to 3. To show that in interval notation, the greater than or equal to would be the brackets. So I write bracket, and then 3 is the bottom um, boundary. Now the top boundary is infinity, so we actually write infinity here. And infinity never has a bracket. It always has a parentheses because you can't have something equal to infinity. It just goes on forever. Okay, so that would be a way to show that my infinity is kind of weird. It basically looks like a sideways 8. And you can also have negative infinity. So if I wrote um, negative 3, 0, and let's say I was graphing... So I was graphing uh, x is less than or equal to negative 3. The boundaries in this case, we would have the negative infinity. And then the top boundary is negative 3. And it is including negative 3. So we put it like that. All right, I think that should be it for this video. I'll see you tomorrow.